Welcome to day 9 of 30 days of AL programming and we are looking at the best practice of the API page or the query and it has been created by AJ Kaufman and uh, the description is that API pages are different from UI pages so they require different properties and they don't behave the same by the way so because API pages are used for integration with external applications they should be treated as contracts so to achieve this the following topics are important one very important one is to separate a, the api app so it's good practice to develop api pages in a separate app instead of combining them in a solution so by doing so it provides better maintainability and a good way of separation of concerns. So this is very important, having a separate API application because they are already different. We separate the concerns of anything that is handled by the API from whatever is handled by the business logic because the API is the part that is exposing, um, uh, to, is exposing the application to different external uh, applications. So the other is the page properties. So an API page must define a minimum set of properties and uh, some of the properties will be part of the URL uh, of the API endpoint. It's recommended to define the properties in the same order as they appear in the URL. So the ones that must be defined are the following. For the page, the page type should be API and the query type also should be API. And we should have the API publisher, API group, um, the API version, entity set name, entity name, delayed insert, and the or data key fields. We have that. I'm looking at one API from the base application. Let's confirm. We have the page type. Of course, the page type has to be there. Okay, the API publisher, Microsoft API group, API group. So it's recommended that they define the same order of the as the URL, but I can see this base application API has defined them in a very weird way. Okay, nonetheless, we can still follow the best practice. That's why it's a best practice suggestion. Uh, API version, entity search name. This Microsoft one is just different. Delayed insert is only for the page. So they have delayed insert. It's not here. Okay, then for us, let's consider uh, the following uh, API page properties and define them in that order. So the API publisher is the name of the API publisher, which is usually the company creating the API. It is the first custom part of the URL e of for a given endpoint. So the value is case sensitive. So this is the pa first part. So it should be defined in that way. The API group, which sets, uh, but I think the the snippet for before I move forward, the snippet for API page has dot uh, creation. So the T page API will do. Then when we have that uh, ID, you can see we have the page type API caption. So the order here is API publisher API group. API version, entity name, entity set name, delayed insert, and source table. So at least this one uh, follows the order that we should define that, except the or data key fields, which is not here. I think it should be added with the system ID here, I think, by default. Anyway, let's move forward to the API group, which sets the group of the API endpoint that uh, page or query is exposed in in the URL the API group comes after the API publisher 
It can be used to distinguish different API apps or groups of APIs from each other, which is also case sensitive. And the API version sets the version of the API endpoint uh, the page or query is exposed to this property is not mandatory it is not if not specify the api will be exposed as a version beta so it can be better or have any format like the ones that we have so this is not so mandatory but you can have format specified with the multiple or single versions so we should never break existing versions any breaking change uh, requires uh to create a new version it's possible to expose an api in multiple versions so this allows uh, to publish a new version of an api without copying all individual objects and updating the version numbers only those api objects that are changed in a new version need to be copied so the other objects only need an addition to the api version property to become available in the new version endpoint so if we look at this api version it says that uh, where we so it sets the versions of the api endpoint the page is exposed to when we get help we can see that the api version is applicable to the page and the query and in the page it sets the versions of the api endpoint the page is exposed and it if if it's not specified the that is the default and this is how we can specify the api version and uh, here is it here it is for the queries the same way as exposed in the page and then we need to go back to our documentation and uh, So the API version, and then uh, the delayed insert. So we have the entity name and entity entity. Okay, entity set name is the plural I entity name. Think of it as a name of the collection of entities. It is recommended to use camel casing for these properties. And uh, the value is case sensitive, and mostly uh, we use camel casing for API. Uh, display names or the field names and then the entity name sets the single singular entity name for the api page or query this name is not used in the url instead the entity name is used in the metadata information it's recommended to use camel casing for this property as well and the delayed insert property is required on an editable api page of course okay now it makes sense so if the page is editable then we need to specify the delayed insert it does not apply to the query object so if editable is false uh, is set on on the api page then uh, delayed insert is not required only api pages apply the behavior to first specify all field all field values and then insert the record as at once so similar to the delayed insert on normal pages we first confirm all values before inserting so it's so important to have the delayed insert on an api page instead of having maybe uh, if the primary key is an entry number you insert uh, records that have not been validated or unnecessary records when you look at the journal lines uh, we only insert after we have moved to the next line in the journal because after all everything has been validated then it's inserted and it helps the auto split key to insert a primary key in between in case the line is being inserted in between the lines but so for the api page if editable is true then or the delayed insert is true for the editable api pages uh, they specify all field values and then insert the record at once okay then so this is how the page properties will look like and the url will be similar to this and uh, so the entity set name property of the url can be extended with an identifier to indicate a single record so the property or data key fields define which fields will be used for the identifier value when we want to identify the 
single record we use the odata key fields to specify that which and it's recommended that we use the system id field for this property because it, it it's immutable it doesn't change uh or we expect it not to change at all and the field that is defined in this property should be part of the api page so this uh, system id will distinct uh, distinctly ad identify that particular record even uh, in different companies so that will remain for that particular record and uh, so the base structure of an API page is similar to the UI page and when specify fil uh, specifying fields there are some considerations to keep in mind there are no mandatory properties because the property application area does not apply in API pages. It can be skipped. The property caption is also optional and it should only be used in the case. The external application requires captions and the caption should be different from the standard caption as defined in the table. So there is no need of specifying a caption. If the caption is the same as the one defined in the table, the name of the field in the example above, display name, should be defined in camel casing. It may not contain spaces, dots, or other special characters, and it's common uh, used to give certain fields a more describing name. So we can say ID is a system ID, number is number, display name for name. You just give them more descriptive names, and these fields should always be part of the API page, the system ID. The field should be exposed with the same, with the name ID at least, the ID of that field. The system modified at which should be exposed with the name last modified date time. So if you choose a different name, then webhook functionality will not work properly. So these are the mandatory fields for the API pages. Okay, stroke queries. So that's it for this best practice for API page. But always, always uh, test. Testing is the religion in programming. Always test to confirm if uh, you are exposing the data. Okay. I'll see you in day uh, 10 will be the turn of 30 days of AL. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.